Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about intersect and contains the row DAX functions. We're going to compare and contrast the two and talk about when you might want to use one over the other. A few days ago, I did a video about contains the row function. And in that tutorial, I explained how the function works. And we also took a look at how to fight fraud uh, with coupons. And uh, I'm going to be reusing the same data set to compare and contrast contains row with intersect. A quick reminder, our data set is a list of coupons that have been redeemed by different retailers and different dates. And if a coupon was redeemed more than once, that coupon is a fraud and we need to flag it as such. Initially, I created this function uh, and this measure to help me figure this stuff out. The purpose of this measure was to really highlight the usage of contains row dex function. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into the logic. Let me just kind of point out uh, the, the few salient points. The first thing that we do in this calculation is we create a list of all bad coupons. And that list of bad coupons is get, uh, gets written into the bad coupons table or variable. And then once we have that variable, we use the contains row function. And the way that function is used is we're going to take a look at our, our table that contains all of the coupons. The table is named coupon redemptions. And then we're going to be using contains row. And that contains row, we're, we're, we'll take a look at every row in coupon redemption, take that coupon from that table, and compare it uh, whether it exists in a summarized uh, bad coupons table. So it does uh, what in SQL world we call if exists type of a lookup. Some Eagle Die commenters um, pointed out that this is not the most optimal usage of this function because even though we are using filter function, which retains all of the columns in our initial coupon redemption table right here, what I do after that is I use a summarize command to get a unique list of all of the coupons in that table. So basically, I go from a Y table that has all of the coupon information, I shrink it down to a single row, and then I do count rows to calculate how many unique, how many bad coupons I have given the selected retailer in the time period. The important thing to note here is contains row is really handy if we would like to retain the original layout of the table. So what filter will do, it'll shrink the number of rows in the table, but it'll keep all of the columns in the table. So I can kind of compare two tables that have completely different layouts. And that's the number one difference between this approach versus what the intersect function offers us. So again, the way this calculation will work, the user will select a retailer, the user will select a different time range. So now we're not able to see all of the coupons anymore. So we will we'll cache all bad coupons in the temp table. And then we're going to take a look at our subset and then see if any of the coupons in the subset still live in a in the main table of bad coupons. And if they do, then we can calculate how many there are in that subset. So the question is, can we implement the same logic or rather can we achieve a very similar result using intersect function? Turns out we can. Let's take a look how I got that. So here's the code for the uh, fraud coupons now with intersect function right here. And uh, the very top of the function is identical to the prior calculation. So here in this code, we're still making a list of all of the bad coupons, regardless of the selected retailer and the time period. So all bad coupons live in this table, a unique list. Now I need to calculate how many bad coupons I have in the subset of the data. And when I mean subset, if a user has filter uh, the report to a particular retailer or a particular data set, then uh, that subset now lives in this coupon redemption table. And what we want to know is how many bad coupons are there. So it turns out it's much easier to solve the problem with intersect function than with contains row function. Because all we need to do is create a unique list of coupons in my coupon table. Then we need to create a unique list of coupons in a bad coupons table. Please know that with a regular table, I can use values function, but I cannot use values function with my temporary table. So in order for me to get that unique list, I have to use a summarize function. And uh, luckily it's not that difficult. I just use summarize, pass my temporary table as a first parameter, and then I specify which column I need to become, I need to make unique. And then by the time this function is done, I have a unique list of all coupons. Then intersect will take a look into my subset coupons, find all of those that are also present in the bad coupons table, 
And then we're gonna do a count rows on top of that and that's gonna give me a number of bad coupons in my subset. So by looking at this code, you're probably asking yourself, well, if intersect works so well, why would I ever want to consider using contains row function? And that's a really good question. The problem is that the only way intersect function works is um, when both of the tables I'm comparing have the same number of columns. So in this particular case, when I'm trying to do count rows, it doesn't matter what columns I have in a table. So in this particular case, intersect works perfectly. However, if you remember in the prior selection, I, I was able to use filter. So if I had been, if I had a need for more columns for subsequent calculation, so in my case, let's say I wanted to use the result of, of that comparison in another, in another, um, for another temporary function or temporary table calculation, that intersect function would, would uh, limit some of my options. So with intersect, it's very handy if I wanna do count rows, or if, I, if I'm lucky to be working with tables, comparing to tables that have exactly the same structure. If I wanna have the flexibility to compare uh, a table that's, let's say, two, a table that's really wide with a table that's narrow, and you only have a handful or one column between the, the two tables that we're comparing that matches, then contains row function will provide a lot more flexibility for me as to how I would like to do that filtering. So I don't wanna make this video too long. I will post this uh, updated file on my blog. You can find the link to the data in the description of this video. Thank you for stopping by, and please come back soon for the next one. Thank you.